What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, reviewing today's Super Mario Odyssey. Ever since we learned about the Nintendo Switch's existence, people have been whispering about the idea of a new Mario game. This hero may appear to just be a little chubby dude with a red hat and a love for jumping, but he actually holds a lot of power. A great Mario title can lead to a console being a huge success, and a bad one can really hurt the system. That means there's some true importance writing on this game being awesome, but thankfully, they managed to surpass what I even dreamed it could be. Super Mario Odyssey is a 3D platforming adventure that wants to make every moment fun in some way. Whether it be hopping across a rainy construction site in New Donk City, using Cappy to take over bodies of enemies and gain new skills, or just climbing a random ledge to get a power moon, there is always something cool to be done. Let's back up a tiny bit. The opening cutscene is only about 45 seconds long and establishes that Bowser has once again kidnapped Princess Peach. In the process of capturing her this time though, he also grabbed a hat spirit, the sister of our buddy Cappy. Watching as they fly off in their airship, Mario and his new magical hat friend make up their minds that they're going to have to go on an epic journey to rescue them. Lucky for us, we're not exactly stranded. Cappy has a special vehicle of his own, and by charging with power moons, we can travel from world to world chasing Bowser. Honestly, this project does so much right, but these levels specifically, they're just so different that it's legendary. Seeing foresty paths literally grow in front of you, swimming in deep underwater environments, or just competing in a race as a silly bouncing seal is fantastic. At its heart, this feels like a direct sequel to Mario 64, and I mean that because of the wide range of things we get to do. You know how each painting we went into in that game had a particular theme? Well this does that too, but it's more instead the fact that each place is radically different because of the creatures that live there. The biggest new thing added here is that we can take over foes. If you're stuck on a tiny ledge in the middle of a puzzle room, you can toss your hat to take over the mind of a nearby bullet bill and start flying around. What if you're trying to get past an area with funny looking walls? Then the answer to your problem might be merging with a living tank to blast open a path. The mechanic of having Mario become the bad guys creates a very fresh sense of excitement for each new world we unlock, because not only are you getting more power moons and going further, but we're also experiencing 100% different gameplay. There was this one part where I was on an island that was covered in poison, and I was having some trouble. I could see, like, stuff I needed to get to, but I didn't know how. Now, that's when I actually started to notice that there were these weird centipede-looking dudes. They had a special, unique talent, where they could extend and contract. By taking one over, I could basically build a bridge with my body and now collect all those hard to reach coins and items that normally would be impossible. By merging with it, essentially my point of view and what I had access to changed. It was goofy fun because all of a sudden what I was doing was radically different than what I was doing a minute ago. Speaking of the weirdness of this game though, let's really dive for a second into the controls. Everything feels very distinctly altered in Odyssey, down to the tiniest details. The speed at which you run, how far you can leap, and even the animations of Mario and his friends are totally redone, and they seem fundamentally new in a way. That's what I love about playing this though, is that it doesn't feel like a Mario game to me. Personally, it seems like a rival studio somehow bought out Nintendo and built their own Mario game based on all the aspects that made the franchise famous. This led to so many little surprises that got me more addicted to exploration. For example, I was just hanging out at a beach one day and this puppy clearly wanted me to follow him. Being curious, I of course walked up the sand and saw what he needed, which turned out to just be a hidden stash of buried treasure. That was interesting, but not exactly amazing. However, I decided to throw my hat to see if I could possess him, and surprisingly, he caught it in his mouth and brought it back. I could play catch with this dog, which was just such a stunning realization. I actually started running from him and making him chase me down to return my cap. It was such a living interaction. It made me want to stay in the world longer if only to discover more secrets like this. With so many hundreds of moons tucked throughout the levels, it was easy to stick around in any place you liked and always find something new to enjoy. Now, if you're the type of person who's hoping for some two-player adventuring, I do have to say that the co-op mode is pretty hilarious. When you activate it in the pause menu, one person takes control of Mario and the other is Cappy, just floating next to him. This essentially enables you a longer reach for grabbing stuff, lets you bash monsters from further back, and it gives you an extra jump. 
My friend and I were experimenting with this for hours and we could use this controller to throw me super far to the point at which we were actually getting some moves earlier than we were probably supposed to. This really perfectly sums up why I could not put Mario Odyssey down. It provides a sandbox for you to just have insane fun in. The only minor complaint I have, and this is a small one, is that I do think that the game is slightly too easy. There are some missions in Mario Galaxy or Mario Sunshine that are incredibly hard and that made them memorable. Beating them was a matter of strength and practice. It meant something to you. Well, here, nothing is really that tough, and dying doesn't mean anything since there's no longer a life system. With so much health and so many checkpoints, I was racking up tons of moons in no time. I also think the forced motion controls are a bit much. See, the problem is that they're really cool once you get used to them, but then if you rely on them, you can't really use them in handheld mode. You can't really just shake your entire switch in public without looking like you're having a freaking seizure. These are tiny gripes that don't really even affect the score because it's just so great. In all my hours with this, I kept getting blown away by how amazing it is, and I think that it's going to lead to this console being even a bigger success. Okay, so we've heard some good and some bad, but let's head over to the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Super Mario Odyssey a 10 out of 10. Hey Nintendo, if you somehow see this video, which sometimes you do, I have a little suggestion for some DLC. Maybe put some paintings that take us to Mario 64, or some sort of portals that take us to previous games. The mechanics in this are so sharp, I kinda wanna see how they'd play with previous entries. Take us back to the past and I'd gladly pay you even more money for such an epic freaking game. Thanks so much for watching gamers, this has been Dreamcast Guy with another review. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But, do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. Now if you excuse me, I gotta go back to Mario, because there's tons more moons to get if I want to complete my master file. Oh, hey, I was just playing a little bit of Grand Theft Auto on my Darth Vader PSP. Are you curious what I'm going to come out with next? Well, if you click this button, you'll be subscribed to be the first to know. Also, if you click over here and here, you can see my latest review and my latest top 10. I promise, it was super good. Or it was really bad and I'm sure you can just make fun of me in the comments. Either way, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching.